profiting off of lies and conspiracy theories, and I don't really see how things get better, how we move on as a country until this informational environment is cleaned up. This age of social media that we live in now is creating hate platforms in the U.S., and we're going to have to find a way to get that under control. Many of these platforms have no rules at all, and they are just rabbit holes of misinformation and hate speech. How important is it to regulate Parler and platforms like it? Big Tech's uh, role poisoning minds with false information has also been an issue for years. They've made millions of dollars on these channels that are that are poisoning people's minds. Many have been calling on the tech titans to do more. These executives don't want any more blood on their hands. Even with these quote unquote mainstream digital platforms turning their backs on this kind of ideology, at least for now, in the eyes of some, too little, too late. Now. Now. I mean, now. 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 Like, I mean, and they're a little slow on the uptake. For many, the move and suspensions by Facebook and Instagram are too little, too late. Too little, too late. Too little, too late. Too little, too late, but it is still a historic moment for big technology companies. The only peril as I can watch, as I watch this, that I can think of, is uh, the takedown of Islamist terrorism social media discussions. ISIS is the only parallel. There are millions of Americans, uh, almost all white, almost all Republicans, who somehow need to be deprogrammed. Do you have any idea how we? <laughs> so how we start that process, <laughs> much less complete it. And on that note, there's never been a better time to get a VPN because these people aren't just going to come after the big, the big folks uh, out there, the big pundits. They're going to come after the little guys too. If you're saying something that they don't like, they might come after your employer and and you know pressure them to fire you. So you need a VPN when you're out there browsing the internet. A new survey reports that an overwhelming 85% of Americans believe that at least one tech company is spying on them through the apps on their smartphones. Two thirds of those ads claim that they've seen ads for products that they've talked about, but never actually searched for online. This is exactly why I use Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield prevents advertisers, corporations, and my ISP from keeping tabs on me. Virtual Shield does all of these things and more. Get the Virtual Shield link in my description or in the pinned comment. Everybody, Drone Tech here. Um, if you're anything like me and you just watched that montage, you're asking yourself, who elected these people to be the information ministers? I mean, really, who put them in that position? And how did they earn that position? Do they have the credibility for that? I don't think so. I mean, Jim Shudo there, who <laughs> was comparing essentially his political opposition to ISIS, that guy used to work in the Biden Obama administration. I'm sorry, the Obama Biden administration. And now he's going to be essentially working for Biden again as an information minister, as a state media propagandist. It's just so obvious what their ploy is here. For years, they've been demonizing their political opposition as racist, sexist, all these, you know, loaded words that are supposed to just end the argument. Uh, they use these words in place of arguments so that they don't have to bother you know, winning in the arena of ideas. They don't have to convince anybody. They just have to call you a bad name and uh, just pile that, those bad names on over time. And they just automatically win the argument. It seems like calling us racist just kind of lost this punch. So now they've escalated to calling us white supremacists. And uh, so it's like, where do we go from there? Literal Nazis, you know, they're calling us that too. And I think this is the danger. You know, the argument that they were making there is that there's these people out there and they're plotting violence on all these platforms. So we, we have to go out there and we have to shut them down. And don't think for a second that it's just these, you know, some random fringe platform. I mean, they're gonna go after Fox News as well, which is a whole other can of worms because that's their business competition. And there should be people asking questions about this. Their ploy is clearly to connect anybody uh, that might be uh, critical of their networks or the Democrat Party, connect them to the most fringe elements of the right. Um, and so there is right-wing violence. I condemn right-wing violence. I condemn what happened uh, at, in the Capitol on the 6th. I think it was disgusting. I think anybody who was involved in what happened to that officer uh, losing his life, they should be prosecuted and they should pay a price. I'm on board with, uh, with that totally. Uh, and like I said before, I'm consistent because I said the same thing about BLM and Antifa, who also uh, acted like domestic terrorists, still act like domestic terrorists. But the difference is, is they are being judged by the standard of mostly peaceful. But 
you get people that got really violent uh, in the Capitol. And I'm not talking about the people who just walked in and strolled along, weren't supposed to be there, and then walked out. I'm talking about the people who got really violent. That is literally a fringe major minority. The vast majority of people there were peaceful. The media knows this, but they're not going to hold, they, they can't possibly hold their political opposition to that standard because there's too much to gain, too much power to gain by taking advantage of the situation because it, it, it flows right into their rhetoric for the last four years. And so now they're going to use this to just crush their political opposition. And if that happens, it, it is happening. It's not even a uh, speculating at this point. It's not hypothetical. But I don't see how you can call this a United States of America anymore at that point, because they're essentially just going to shut down uh, the voices of 75 million people in this country. Another guy on there said that these people, they're making millions of dollars, these platforms. Uh, so is the media. And I got to say, if the media was judged by the same standards that they're judging all these other platforms that they're demonizing as these horrible dens uh, of violence and, and uh, domestic terrorism planning, look, there's already laws against that. If there is, if there are people planning violence on any of the platforms, whether it be Parler, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, the FBI is going to be alerted. It's already illegal. They're just using this as an excuse to shut up their opposition. They're taking a tiny fringe and they're painting their entire opposition in, in that lens. The fact is, if CNN and MSNBC were judged by their own standards, they would be shut down. I mean, CNN has been uh, inciting violence for the last four years. You had uh, ICE facility attacks that were incited by stuff that AOC was saying and stuff that was on CNN. They actually promoted the organization where two of the attackers came from. Then you have the GOP baseball game shooting. That guy was a Democrat who posted frequently on Facebook, and if you read his postings, it's all the stuff you're hearing on MSNBC and CNN. And on MSNBC, it's a very welcoming home of critical race conspiracy theory, with people like Joy Reid constantly spouting out, bringing on guests like the this grifter, the founder of the 1619 Project. These media outlets and corporations that are claiming they don't want to be associated with violence or, or with violent ideologies, really, then why are you supporting BLM? These corporations are just throwing money at the Democrat Party and BLM. BLM is uh, connected to lot, plenty of violent incidents. Just to name one, Dallas, where five police were ambushed and murdered. There were several others hurt, seriously injured, at a BLM rally where they were calling for violence against police. And you think that these aren't being driven? by the media's cherry-picked uh, stories and their cherry-picked data? Of course they are, or, or at the very least, it's debatable. But we won't even get that debate, of course, because who would have to do it? It would have to be them, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna incriminate themselves. Anyway, just wanted to ha say something quickly about that video, because it was just driving me nuts. Um, I know how y'all feel out there. I'm right there with you, but just try to stay positive. Above all, stay peaceful, and I'll see you all next video.